There is a uh, interesting uh, discovery that was made, I shouldn't say discovery, well interesting discovery that was made by Coleman and Wein Sidney Coleman and Eric Weinberg, not Steve Weinberg. Which I have requested uh, Vikram to cover, but it basically starts with a Lagrangian whose V is at phi equal to 0, so whose minima of V are at phi equal to 0. But after you do the loop calculations and add calculate the effective action they shift to non-zero. Okay. So, it is a very cute and clever example they constructed. You start with a V like this, but it is a quantum electrodynamics. So, there is a coupling to a electromagnetic field. So, after it it develops a logarithmic curvature like this and becomes like this. So, if a charged field acquires a non-zero vacuum expectation value, it means the vacuum does not vacuum is quote charged okay. and then electromagnetism will not be uh, gauge invariance will be broken and the photon will acquire a small mass and etcetera. But which is what was eventually realized for uh, standard model, we are actually living in a charged vacuum if you like, if you want to feel strained and stretched, yeah well there is because there is SU2 charge filling the vacuum and that is why uh, the W bosons are so massive, okay, because that wave is at 250 GeV. Okay, so, that is the real machinery behind and still perturbative. Okay, but the other uh, general point I want to tell you is that uh, we, so here this F in general we propose that look what is the most general derivative expansion including only local fields I can make of gamma in which no higher than second derivative or square of the first derivative occurs then this is the most general expansion, except that you have to supply some overall factor which involves only phi and not derivatives, then you are still within that uh, domain. What this, so this f would be, would come from the quantum corrections and sometimes you have to put that kind of a overall multiplication even otherwise, this is what I will come to next later. The, other thing I want to tell you is that the real local expansion in, uh, in terms of only local uh, monomials of phi and d mu phi need not always be so civilized. Okay. And in fact, what are there are things called effective field theories of uh, pions and nucleons which is called chiral Lagrangian. For hadronic physics, so here we are actually living in a world where the strong force has shielded all the uh, color charge and the only observed things are pions and uh, nucleons. Then it turns out that those pions are uh, Goldstone bosons, we did not talk about it so far, but maybe I should have done Goldstone, maybe next time we will do that before I sign off and uh, Vikram takes over. But in this case, the pions, oh God, so I am getting into a un unnecessarily long lecture. Let me simply say that pions are described by, are written purely as exponent in the exponent. Okay. 
why it is like that it takes a long time to explain but you put some coupling and then a tau a pi a okay the tau is so this is yeah th this is uh, su2 so which belongs to this is a su2 valued space time field su2 group valued okay often one writes algebra valued fields like a mu a mu a tau a the gauge field is algebra valued but here we actually write group valued fields where this is phi of x tau a are the generators and maybe I have to put a half factor I think but yeah, because the generators are half. So, whereas for hadrons or nucleons, we write a doublet, right. So, this u is a 2 by 2 matrix because it is exponent of tau. So, it is a SU2 valued matrix. Uh, SU2 matrix which is space time field this is a doublet representation and then the Lagrangian is to be constructed from all possible uh, terms consistent with global SU2 there is no gauge field and Lorentz invariance. So, if you do this then the Lagrangian begins uh, looks like 1 half d mu u dagger e d mu u and you can have higher things like a times d mu d nu u dagger d mu d nu u dagger u you can start writing all kinds of terms or you can begin to write d mu u dagger d mu u whole squared okay so all kinds of terms begin to appear and then you will also have psi dagger or rather psi bar and then uh, d mu. So, typically something like u dagger d mu u times this psi the big psi psi bar gamma mu psi. Okay. So, you begin to develop all kinds of terms which are all consistent with uh, SU2 global symmetry and of course, contract all Lorentz indices. So, you can have quite a wild Lagrangian like this which will not fit into this kind of simple form and in that case you do not expect to derive any effective potential because all kinds of derivatives appear. This is called chiral Lagrangian, uh, reason for chiral is long to explain that has to do with this, hyp this hypothesis. This was all figured out by uh, well Weinberg first and then but he did not put it in the formal way. So, and the, of course, S Weinberg and by Callan. Coleman, West and Zumino. So, Weinberg pointed out that you had to write all possible terms and then gave a prescription 
but these people then figured out that what it amounted to was doing this. Okay, so so not it is not always that you will have this. You can have all kinds of wild Lagrangians, but you can still define an effective potential, you, uh, effective action. There is nothing against defining an effective action, except that you have then have to include the higher derivatives as well with uh, front factors containing uh, local products of fields. Okay. So the method will remain valid, but this expansion will be completely useless because there are all kinds of non-local pieces. You can then do a derivative expansion which is local. So before this approach was developed, people were using what is called current algebra. So because what you do observe is there is some kind of conserved charge, I mean baryon number is conserved and isospin was conserved. So you can write the currents J mu A as equal to psi bar tau A gamma mu psi. Okay. So these currents would obey the algebra of SU2 and you just try to derive everything from, but you have to treat them as quantum fields. So their local products are not well defined. And then you can derive various uh, relationships, but that was a very complicated method and uh, this at least recast the theory into the theory of a Lagrangian. I want to make some, so I think next time I will try to do, one we said was try to prove this uh, connected, so connected diagrams, proper definition and why exponential of uh, Z regenerates the exponential of connected diagrams, generates all possible diagrams or Green's functions rather. Um, and maybe the Goldstone theorem. Today I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what is called asymptotic theory. And this is based on Isaacson and Joubert. And uh, if you can understand the writing at first go, please come and collect a prize from me. Uh, and if you realize it, so it's like uh, like a kaon, kaon, you know, it's called kaon no? in Zen Buddhism. Your guru gives you a mantra and then you contemplate it for 10 years and then one day you are enlightened. Oh, this is what it means. So uh, that book is like that. So it, it talks in terms of uh, ko koans, koan. Okay. So the main kind of puzzle that people still date face, it's really, you know, so what is meant by continuum was developed by uh, Cantor and Dedekind and others in uh, 19th century. And at first, even within mathematical community, there was a lot of reaction to that. But then they actually realized the value of, uh, you know, nailing down what is meant by the continuum. But when quantum mechanics came and to be described in uh, unbounded space, it really caused a lot of problem to understanding everything. And the problems still persist in a sense, but we kind of regulate them. So the problem is like this, let me draw time axis and uh, I am drawing, so well quantum mechanics somehow people draw like this, so minus infinity is here and plus infinity is here, so transition amplitude, right. So T equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. So what we think of is that, so let us try to draw the energy spectrum, spectrum just means uh, set of eigenvalues. And actually, uh, it is a continuum, so drawing this is only symbolic, it is a genuine continuum, but there are levels like this. And we expect that the theory is free, so the whole assumption of perturbation theory is predicated on 
the assumption that asymptotically whatever that means the particles are free non interacting and if you really force me to say what this asymptotically means well finally ultimately in the days of cosmic rays they used to observe these bubble chamber diagrams right something crosses your plate there is some emulsion plate and you can see all kinds of nice curves if you see old cosmic ray plates that is what a particle is ultimately that is what it means it draws it produces pretty consistent tracks and the story has not changed till date except that today we have gigantic detectors with a beam pipe running through them and human beings are something like this and they produce huge tracks okay huge slew of tracks so what is meant by particle is that so it is uh, what con what condensed matter people tell you are electrons are not they are really quasi particles and nobody isolated an electron from it it just something you apply some voltage and something happens okay you don't know what's flowing inside but yeah there is a good description in terms of almost free quanta which are fermionic and it's a gauge invariance which enforces that they still have to carry unit charge so those quasi particles look just like electrons but the real electrons are observed in these emulsions they are just tracks so we do know that there are these tracks and we do know that gluons and quarks do not produce such tracks so gluons and quarks do not exist in asymptotic states so the asymptotically there are particles and that they are non interacting but then you also want interaction because they have to do something so in the region near t equal to 0 interaction turns on so in elementary quantum mechanics that tell you first uh, you know you have done fermi's golden rule and all that so they say well you introduce a kind of delta function uh, theta function which turns on has a long plateau and then switches off but the off part is going to be infinite it's going to go to infinity so this is where it turns on and then turns off of course nature doesn't wait to turn things on and off so what do you mean by this so then people after a lot of thinking have come up with the following prescriptions that keep us keep our sanity and allow us to use the mathematics we know first is that the spectrum remains the same okay this is a very big assumption so i send in particles they interact and while they are interacting of course they have some interaction energies and so on what will happen is that of one free particle and another free particle they may become something else here okay and develop some interaction energy but the spectrum is the same the list of eigen values is the same although they will occupy different uh, entries in the list and then come back because ultimately they are again still electron and muon or whatever they are so they will come back as free particles in the intermediate region they'll get kicked off here and there but within that same spectrum the spectrum of h and h0 uh, uh, so hypothesis 1 is that the spectra of h0 and H zero plus H i are identical. Now, for one thing, this precludes any any bound states because bound state would mean that there are some 
states below e equal to 0. So it actually does not allow you to have bound states. So you add a caveat that bound states if any should be added by hand. which would be some finite spectrum can be added by hand. But it does not change the structure of the uh, overall spectrum, it is just kind of a few things added at the bottom and you never really are able to calculate it so it does not matter. Yeah, so but at the same time you want the field in this region to still be the free field. Fields uh, phi and field in the, so we call in and out fields, right. So the fields phi in, phi out. in the in and out regions obey the same obey free field equations and the same property holds for phi in the interaction region. This you know, this we use already in quantum mechanics too because this is called the interaction picture. We evolve phi of x using only phi 0, h 0. So, x and t. And this could be at in the in region. Okay, with T1 very large and negative. So, this is what we propose and then define a, uh, okay, so we will not get into the, you know the interaction picture. Now, because of this fact, some kind of psychology, some you can see beginning to see the contradiction because we want the asymptotic fields to obey canonical commutation relations which are equivalent to this evolution. But really the field which is in the interaction region has to obey this but it has to somehow carry more information. So the resolution of this is to propose that actually there is a normalization factor between the two. So, propose that phi of x is some normalization phi x in. and we assume that it will be same as with somewhere between 0 and 1. Should, hmm? 
yes yes and a real number so this is sometimes called wave function renormalization what this means is that thus while uh, see what is the effect of acting with phi on vacuum phi has a creation and a destruction operator so the destruction operator acting on zero will give zero the creation operator will connect it to a one particle state and will be exactly equal to 1 and if you want this is uh, 0 minus and this is 0 plus okay. So these are just 1 because they produce one particle state but 1 phi 0 is equal to square root z times this and therefore less than 1. This means that phi has more content than just one particle states. It contains all the uh, pair productions and things like that which are not terribly a part of the interaction but they are sort of kinematic redefinition of the vacuum okay. So I am now actually borrowing words from Isaacson and Zuber one particle states do not exhaust the content of phi the full phi. So for example you might get away with a p minus p so conserve all charges momenta everything that you have to conserve in the vacuum but such states may be contributing to the actual phi. Secondly to avoid the contradiction with this we also have to propose that this statement is not an operator statement okay. so in terms of hilbert space so i started numbering something right so perturbation theory non interest spectrum is this the fields this then we say number 3 uh, these are not logically independent ones but kind of build on top of each other and with the additional caveat that so the above that uh, this relation star So this is called weak equivalence okay, not an operator statement <coughs> it is true only by matrix element by matrix element but not true for the whole operator. Right. 
right it gets puffed up okay it has more things in it than the out inner out Uh, vacuum at plus infinity and vacuum at minus infinity. Technically, technically you have to keep them different because uh, all you can do is that you see free particles in the in region, you see free particles in the out region, but you have passed through this region of interaction and uh, states in quantum mechanics are defined only up to an overall phase. So, you do not know what overall phase it may have picked up in going from in to out. So, people technically keep it like that for most part uh, it does not matter, but there are uh, interesting experiments where for example, vacuum is not really stable and things like that. So, then actually even the out state is not true vacuum either, but there can be uh, phases like this. In fact, one famous example is Barry's phase. It, it does not have to do with asymptotic theory, but that is where you evolve a system through a series of changes parametrically change Hamiltonian. You come back to the same value of the Hamiltonian, but the two states will differ by a phase. If there is somehow a topological obstruction to shrinking that path, if the path cannot be shrunk. So, the point is when although the in and initial and final Hamiltonians look identical, if you have either got a space or time region in between, so that you do not have a way of directly comparing, then you should leave a fa relative phase between them. So, if you send the thing through LH, LHC, do not expect that that electron is same as that one, it may have got a phase in it. Okay. So, the next steps have to do are rather technical. So, we will stop today with uh, just writing out this thing which you can take as homework, uh, which is as a preparation for the next uh, main statement. So, what I do want to do is cover what is called the Schellen Lehmann representation. So, uh, this is some kind of a Swedish A and people tell me that this is spoken Chalene. So, but as a preparation, check that for a free field, the commutator phi x phi y can be written in the form and now I am slightly on thin ice because I am using no, I, I do not personally use Isaacson and Joubert normalization, but for the time being I will use it because I am taking it from there, I will tell you how it differs. Which is defined to be equal to i times delta. epsilon k 0 is sin of k 0. So, 
So you can try to do this basically you know that delta function is when it has a polynomial inside is product of delta functions at the various zeros uh, divided by the uh, norm of the derivative of the function at that point. So you can carry out the dk0 integration and you should recover the thing above okay. And Isaacson and Joubert notation is that um, so nobody can change the canonical relations phi pi have to be 1 but in a a dagger you can insert uh, some change in normalization. So I am used to using along with Weinberg and Sudarshan and so on to just set this equal to delta 3 but Isaacson and Joubert put a 2 pi cube. Uh, 2 omega k here. Okay. So if you do not put any other normalization then this is just like harmonic oscillator it will just raise and lower the number operator but if you put this then there are some advantages to the uh, what Isaacson and Joubert like about this is that this quantity together is Lorentz covariant. So there creation destruction operators are also Lorentz covariant and so on minor advantage is nothing very great but this is the normalization they use so in that normalization this will come out like this. So you have to do a free field expansion also with d3 k over 2 pi cube 2 omega k etc. then the a a dagger you use this then you should get that okay good. So we will start with this next time. And uh, yes, if you would like to be prepared, then you use read this section from uh, Isaacson and Joubert in a chapter called Asymptotic Theory. I wrote it somewhere. The section called Asymptotic Theory, which is in the chapter called External Fields, the effect of external fields. Or 